Michigan heads east to play Maryland, a team that really under Jim Harbaugh, they have dominated, although with a late score last year, it was a closer game than many felt it was in reality, a one-score matchup uh, in Ann Arbor for that game. This Maryland team, though, has really struggled as of late. They're 6-4, and four, but 3-4 and four in the Big Ten. Struggling on offense, not explosive with Tua's brother, Talia, uh, in his, what, third year starting. Josh Gass there as Michigan, though, has the number one scoring defense, number one overall defense, and number one pass defense in all of college football. Wolverines are favored by 19.5 points. This game will be on Fox. Big noon, second week in a row for Michigan, second of three straight weeks. Predict the score down in the comments. Michigan has had some blow out against Maryland under Jim Harbaugh. Go down and predict the score. I think I've got mine. I'm going to hold on to it. Let's see. My score prediction is going to be, I'm going to go 42-9. I don't think Josh Gass has them to score a touchdown against Michigan. 42-9. Predict your score as Michigan gets its thousandth win in Maryland coming up on Saturday. Go into the comments and make your prediction. We are going to break down this game in a little bit of a you know, Michigan slanted way coming up on the Michigan Football Report right now. As always, I am your host, James Yoder. What to watch for in a game that I think a month ago really looked like it would be exciting. Could be a top 10, top 15 matchup. Maryland was really off to a strong start, but they have not been strong since their schedule. They won against Townsend. They beat Charlotte, right? Uh, Biff Pogey, who came out last week and uh, really supported Jim Harbaugh. Then they crushed Virginia, and that Virginia team turned out to stink. You beat Michigan State, so I said, okay, you're looking 4-0. No, now 5-0, no, you crush Indiana. But ever since they went and played at Ohio State, they lost by 20 in that game, right? Then you lose a game, just an unforgivable game against Illinois. Then you lose an even more unforgivable game at Northwestern. You get crushed against Penn State, 51-15. to We saw that Penn State offense. And somehow they scored 51 points on uh, on Maryland, but they finally get a win, 13 to 10 against Nebraska. Or you'd be going into this Michigan game with a five-game losing streak. First thing I'm looking for: Michigan's defense got to dismantle Gas's offense, right? Josh Gas, speed and space. I just his entire time at Michigan just kind of disgusts me because he gets a lot of credit for 2021, even though he didn't deserve it. He wasn't the true offensive coordinator, just in title. Brad, I see you, Brad. I see the $10 super chat. I'm going to get to you in just a moment. Dismantle Gaz's offense. No chance Maryland can stop Michigan's offense. So if Michigan can dismantle Josh Gaz's speed and space offense, um, Michigan's going to control this game. The only chance Maryland has is if they can somehow exploit Michigan's defense in any way. And over Josh Gaz's five years as an offensive coordinator, three at Michigan, one at Miami last year, and now at Maryland. I have yet to see anything that says he can do that. All right, guys, I'm making a deal. I put out the vibes. The number of new subscribers we get today's video, this preview, how many subscribers we get who click that button today, that's how many points Michigan's going to score. So if we get 50 new subscribers this video, 50 new subscribers, put a 50 burger on Gaddis and Maryland. Make sure you subscribe to the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Jack, we had two $10 Super Chats coming in from Brad. If you want to put those on screen, I'm, I'll take them during this segment, or we can wait. But, Brad, I see you with the bet. I see you with the Bosa. You're going to get two helmet stickers. Eyes on Talia, right, uh, to his brother. He has been in college, feels like, forever. This is like his ninth year, it seems like. And he's had a decent game, but not like a successful game against Michigan the last couple seasons. 20 of 30, 270 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions last year. Prior year, 19 of 33, 178 not really that big of a game. That's the game that Michigan absolutely blew Maryland out, had a touchdown, had an interception, and a rusting touchdown. On the season, right, he is 245 of 375, so they're throwing the ball a lot more than Michigan is. 65% uh, clip he's throwing the ball at, 2,769 yards. He's got himself 22 passing touchdowns, an interception, 26 total touchdowns with that rushing TD. Now, he's going to go, uh, Jack, make sure we change that on top. We got a little typo there on that Michigan type. We got a Michigan football defense that he's going to face. This Michigan football defense, number one in the country right now at 232 points per game. Number one in passing defense at two, 134 yards per game. Number 12 in rush defense. Okay, cool. And number one in points. I have never seen a college football defense number one in three of those four categories, the main four categories that you rank defenses in this late in the season. So we're going to see an old friend, right? Josh Gaddis um, 
It's been an underperforming offense. And the thing that when I dove into this Maryland offense that just reminded me so much of why he was not successful in Michigan is that number right there. Number 77 in the country in red zone success. And they get in there, they score, they score touchdowns, they score field goals, dismantle Josh Gass's offense, and you are going to have an absolute field day because – to his brother, Talia, he's going to throw some interceptions. That's what he's known for, right? To have big plays, but against the big teams like Michigan, he throws interceptions, and then Michigan's offense should have an absolute field day because this Maryland defense is among the worst in the entire Big Ten. Hell, probably one of the top three or four worst defenses that I think leads in all of Power Five. Let me know if you want Jim Harbaugh on the sidelines. Hell, if you like Jim Harbaugh on the sidelines, then like this video. The only reason we do this is because it's like, let's put out – the good vibes. Put out the good vibes. Don't jinx it. I'll get a list of everybody who likes the video, everybody who watched the video. They better match up. The more people like it, put out the good vibes. Jim Harbaugh is going to have something happen here in the next two days or so. It's going to put him back in the field against Maryland. Guys, we are presented by Prize Picks, my favorite app this football season. I'm going to tell you a little about Prize Picks. It's the easiest and fastest way to play daily fantasy sports. You just pick more or less on player stats to win up to 25 times your money. This week on Prize Picks, I may I let somebody else make my picks. I'm on a three-game losing streak, three-week losing streak. So I've got CJ Stroud. I'm going more than one and a half passing touchdowns. I'm going more than a half touchdown for the Kelsey brothers combined. Weird one there, but I digress. I'm going more than a half touchdown run for Jalen Hurts. And then C.D. Lamb. What is that? 86 and a half yards receiving. He's had 150 for three straight games. I'm going more for him, too, as well. Look, I'm making these four picks right now. I raised $10. If I hit all those, just pick more or less, right? I'm playing against the numbers. I'm not playing against anybody else. That's why I love price picks. $10 risk. Win those. Pick those right. I get myself a $100 payout. You can mix and match sports. I could have an NFL and an NBA pick on the same uh, the same ticket. Reboot policy. If any of those guys gets hurt in the first half, doesn't come back for the second half, they're just taken off the ticket and it keeps on rolling. And you have flex play with prize picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. And they're giving a special deal to you, a $100 first deposit match. When you use code CLNS at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. The link is in the comments. The link is in the description. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Get a $100 deposit bonus when you make your first deposit using that link and the promo code CLNS. We toss in the live chat too. We'll toss in the live chat as well. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Jim Harbaugh called Michigan America's team. You know who else called America's team? I call them America's team. But Michigan needs to embrace the fact that they are a villain. Jack, what did you send me this morning? You said Stephen A. Smith or somebody said uh, Jim Harbaugh and Michigan are Darth Vader, right? They are they, – Michigan is just the uh, – uh, they are the bad guys. They're unlikable to all these media opponents, all these other schools. I actually – Colin Cowards come out and said he's never rooted harder for a college football team than he did Michigan against Penn State. So I think there's both sides. If I – if it was me and I was rooting for Michigan but this happened to another team, I would be rooting for that team because of how – poorly they've been treated by uh, the media, by the Big Ten. Um, I said this on Saturday, right? Right as the game was getting kicked off, 11.13 a.m. Um, Central Time, which is 12.13 there in uh, in uh, Penn State. I said, this entire, the entire country is pulling for Michigan today. And I was kind of being a joke. I was kind of joking. There. I knew this is a good reaction from people. Liberty and justice for all, America's team, right? America's team is Michigan. And then Monday, Jim Harbaugh comes and says this. It's got to be America's team. This has got to be America's team. America loves a team that beats the odds, beats the adversity, overcomes with the naysayers, critics, so-called experts thinks. That's my favorite kind of team. And you got to embrace it. Go on the road against Maryland and act like you're playing at home. When people boo you, they call you cheers. Act like they're saying to somebody else. Just say, bring it on. Do what Blake Corum did. You see him going to the end zone for a touchdown. He mocked uh, Manny Diaz, the Penn State defensive coordinator. It was like, and he was just making fun of him. Like, where are you at right now? Embrace the role as villain. J.J. McCarthy, wave bye-bye to the Ohio State crowd, right? Say we own this B. Like he said, run off the field at Penn State. Embrace the vic the, the, the villain role. Uh, kind of like LeBron did when he went to Miami. Right? He, he was trying to push it off. When he finally embraced it, boom, went back-to-back -back titles his second and third year with the Heat. Comment USA to support Jim Harbaugh. This Michigan football team, folks, this is America's team. 
Michigan really needs to reestablish the passing game. Uh, no touchdowns from J.J. McCarthy the last two games, but he had that 335, 340 yards two weeks ago. No passing touchdowns, so they struggled to pass a little bit in the red zone, really relied on Blake Corum. Um, but look, Drew Aller, right, he passed on this Maryland team. Uh, he went 24-5 of 34 for two 240 yards, four touchdowns against Maryland. J.J. McCarthy needs to be feeling it. He needs to feel confident going to the Ohio State game. Nothing's going to do that better than 285 yards and three touchdowns against Maryland and then maybe sitting by the end of the third quarter. Uh, 60 yards against Penn State. It got the job done. It got the win. J.J.'s not a selfless player. He was fine with it. But I don't want Michigan to have a Kim, you know, throw for 105 yards, only 12 or 13 uh, passes because you can then three week stretch going into the Ohio State game where you've got barely any passing production. I think Michigan needs to light it up a little bit more, reestablish that passing game. Just over a week, baby. Just over a week, going for three straight, beat Ohio State again. So make sure from now until next Saturday and then basically forever, just support the cause. Comment Bosa over and over. Just do it as many times as your little heart desires. Uh, trust me, the players see it, parents watch the show. Jim Harbaugh has my tweets on uh, on demand with the Har- the America's team thing. Um, they see it, and they, they understand the support. This team's doing a lot of support internally, a lot of pressure externally. Keep up the internal support. Uh, they watch videos on YouTube just like anybody else. Make sure they go down and see Beat Ohio State again. Type of Bosa down in the comments. I really like to see the Michigan give Ohio State nightmares. I think that running game against Penn State – is given Ryan Day, is given Jim Knowles nightmares, right? The two years ago nightmares when they Michigan just bludgeoned Ohio State over and over and over. Not necessarily the last year not nightmares. It wasn't 75 yards. It wasn't 85 yards. Diamond Edwards last time. But I would like to see them give a new wrinkle to the playbook this week, like we've seen from one man who I've been talking about for this entire year, and that's Diamond Edwards, right? Two years ago, as a true freshman in 2021, he introduced himself to the world as a as a wide receiver, right, set a Michigan football record for a running back with 10 catches for 170 yards and a touchdown against Maryland two years ago. Now, how about this? Remember that later on that year, what else did he do in the Big Ten championship game against Iowa? He threw a 40-plus yard touchdown pass to Roman Wilson. It was an absolute strike. It was an absolute dime. He had a pep and some pep in his steps, right? He had a little pep in his step, broke it outside, Got the longer touchdown. Seemed like Diamond Edwards just kind of coming back. Well, he wasn't just going down at the first hit he took. That kind of confidence is what Michigan needs from him, from this entire team. I would love them to give Ohio State more nightmares. They showed they can continue being the ground and pound team. They know J.J. McCarthy can throw. Let's mix the Don back into it. Have him catch six, seven, eight passes downfield. Not just a little screen. Downfield. Out of the backfield. Hell, toss to him on the outside. Have him step up and fire downfield again like he proved he could do in the 2021 Big Ten Championship game. Make Ohio State prepare for everything. Because as of right now, they're probably not preparing for some of the things they have in the past. And that's not necessarily a great thing. Give them nightmares. Do it by reintroducing the Don, the playbook from a receiver, and hell, maybe even a passer. I'll ask you guys this question, though. Let's see Thomas Berry. Yoder gang, do we hang 50 on Ohio State? I sure as hell hope so. Um, 40 yards receiving at Maryland for the Don. Over or under? Look, I've been, I've been overly confident with Edwards all season, so I'm not stopping now. Even though it probably won't happen, I'm going over. I'm going over. He's giving 100 yards receiving against Maryland. So let me know what you guys think, over or under. If he gets the over, it's more nightmares for Ohio State. They know they got to worry about Blake Corum. they got to worry about Diamond Edwards running 85 yards. they got to worry about Diamond Edwards catching the ball for 40, 50, 60 yards. J.J. McCarthy, Roman Wilson, Cornelius Johnson, A.J. Barner, Colson Loveland, 6-7. Eight offensive linemen at times that bludgeon the Penn State. If you do that, trust me, you will do whatever you want against Jim Knowles and this revitalized, resurgent Ohio State defense despite all the talent they have because, frankly, they just won't know what the hell to prepare for. Give them all the wrinkles you can coming up on Saturday against Maryland because it just takes them more time to prepare for those things and less on just stopping your core offense. That is our Michigan Maryland preview as Michigan's going for win number 1,000 coming up on Saturday.